It is so good to be with you all today as we talk about prayer. I hope you are uh, enjoying your time in your homes with your family and friends. Well, not your friends, unless you're doing it virtually, as I hope all of us are honoring social distancing because my personal opinion, which may get me in trouble, I am not an expert, but I tend to think that if we can behave, and teach our children, which is hard not to be close to one another, that we will get through this much quicker. The longer we kind of dilly dally and don't take this seriously, as hard as it, as hard as it, as hard as it is for us, the worse it's going to be for us, and the longer we'll be in this pickle. So I hope that you'll uh, join me in doing social distancing. I'm so happy and thankful for everybody who's been meeting virtually and and uh, doing that work. Some of we have a skeleton crew here at the office. Um, coming and going, we are maintaining social distances uh, and uh, just trying to bring the church alive in a new way to you, but doing it as safely as we can. For those who don't know me, my name is Justin, I'm the rector here, and I am just gonna piggyback, if you haven't watched Father Jim's video, watch it first. I'm gonna piggyback on what he's talking about, talk about a couple types of prayer that are really special to me. And the first, as we think about the history of the church, prayer obviously is very important, and it's been important we, we hear about prayer in the Old Testament. We hear about prayer in the New Testament. We see Jesus. We're actually getting close to an event we're going to celebrate in the life of the church on Monday, Thursday, when Jesus goes to the Garden of Gethsemane and he prays all night and the disciples are invited to wait uh, with him and pray. And of course, they fall asleep. Um, and then there's other aspects. Paul talks about prayer in his writings as well, that we are people of prayer. Now, prayer uh, is not just us talking to God. That is sometimes what we think about. And a lot of times we're really good about praying when things are bad. And we're bad about praying when things are good. Um, in the early church, there was an aspect of prayer that I've really been drawn to that talks about prayer as a, almost a, a way of life. A way of waking up, not formally saying, uh, hello God. But thinking about your life as a prayerful movement in God's glory and grace. And some of the tools they use to help them do that is they would use things like icons, like this one you see here on the wall. Where they would have something very beautiful like that, that was prayerfully made. What I mean by that is every aspect of this, we call it icon writing, not painting. They would paint, write this icon. They would pray over the paint. They'd pray over the picture. They would pray over every aspect of it as a way of understanding who God is in their life. It was a tool, not something they worshiped. And we still see churches to this day that are ornate and covered in icons. And it's a bit of a misnomer in the Christian world with those who are opposed to icons as tools for prayer who think they're, they're icons. Uh, uh, they think they're idols instead of, instead of being prayer icons. Um, and I think we have, to, we have to be honest about that, that this is a tool, it's not something we're worshiping. And they come in so many different, we, we can see pictures of saints, we can see a picture like this, which is the Trinity. This is an icon of the Holy Trinity. As we contemplate something so mysterious and magical, and that's really the trick to a prayer lived out daily is contemplation. You know, as you walk around these days and, and as we remain socially distant, maybe you like me have noticed things in your neighborhood on your walks. Things you have never noticed before, parts of nature. And how do they exude God's glory? What do they tell you about God? That's prayer. Because what you are doing is you are intentionally entering into a conversation with God who created all things. And you're looking for different ways of understanding God. And everything that we run into in creation, the early church, many of the church fathers would talk about, it, especially those in the desert, would say as a, as a conduit, a window for God. So an icon is just another expression of what we already see in nature. So as we think about prayer, I invite us to imagine how prayer can be utilized as we go about our day, as we connect with each other, as we enter into conversations with friends, as we do all this virtual connection that's happening in the world while we kind of get our, our life back together and overcome this, this virus. It's all prayerful. It all has the possibility of transforming uh, who we are. I want to encourage us to think about that. The other aspect of prayer is, that I want to talk about is more ascetical, it's more formation driven. How we form ourselves to be intentional conduits of God. Prayer is an aspect of that. Asceticism is the other side of what we talk about in the desert, fathers and mothers. 
how do we intentionally form ourselves to be disciples, to be people who go out and, and testify, if you will, to God? Well, of course, underneath that ascetical practice is, is prayer. How do we do that? How do we have real conversations that reflect God's grace? Well, that starts from a place of prayer. We can't very well have some of the difficult conversations we have to have around Bible, theology, all those things that we like to fight about. We can't have those conversations if we don't come at it from a place of prayer. In other words, if we are not intentionally in relationship with God and realize our place in the grand scheme of life, that the world is not ours, that we do not hold the keys to theology, that I am no more right to say that tradition has said this than somebody else who has done their prayerful theological work. That's where prayer comes in because prayer gives us the, the glue that holds us together through our differences. Because when we're prayerful, when we're connected, listening to God through others, through what we experience, through our own heart, in our own, our own intentional time with God, that's where we grow, and that's where we become something else. So prayer is so much more than just shooting up, Lord, please watch over me tonight. That's important. But prayer can be so much more than that. And I encourage us to imagine how prayer can be a tool in our lives as we live more fully for the sake of the gospel. How it drives us, how it kind of moves us through our fears and our anxiety, which we got plenty of that right now. Plenty of anxiety. I am guilty of it. And anybody who says they're not would probably be not telling us the whole truth. There is plenty of societal anxiety that we're all participating in that prayer allows us to maybe move through. I'll leave you with this beautiful image that came to me this morning. One of our church members, uh, Kathy Aiken, who leads one of our intentional prayer ministries that I strongly encourage you to attend when we come back together. And, and maybe we'll have a virtual opportunity for this. And it's a group that just sits there and contemplates in our annex. Well, she sent me a picture of, an, of a lily opening up. And it's such a powerful moment to think about prayer because in the chaos of all these green leaves, here comes this white flower, just comes right up out of there. And that is exactly what a life of prayer does for us in our relationship with God. It, it opens us up to much more than we can ever imagine and could ever conceive. So I hope during this time, and as we talk about confirmation, those of you thinking about being confirmed, reaffirming your faith, or being received into the church, that you'll adopt a bit of a prayer life. And not just remember to say your dinner prayers, your night prayers, but truly think about how you can go deeper into a relationship with God every moment of your life, as that will inform how we come together. So until next time, enjoy this time together.